Alright, hello boys and girls. I'm going to read you this story book. It is called Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Two hearts as one. So let's read the story. Snow White learned to kiss her husband, the prince. I'll be back soon, dear, she said. I will miss you, said the prince. Snow White sang happily as she headed toward the Seven Dwarves' cottage. So much had happened since the, that long ago day when the forest animals had led her there. The evil queen was gone, and Snow White lived happily with her prince. Soon they would celebrate their first wedding anniversary. Snow White could hardly believe it. Oh, they're going to celebrate the first wedding anniversary. So let's see what Snow White is planning to do. Hello? Hello? Snow White called out to the seven dwarves as they ran to greet her. Even Grumpy couldn't hide his delight. I have a special favor to ask you, said Snow White. The prince and I will soon celebrate our first year together. I would like to make him dinner, but no one at the palace will let me cook. They don't know what they're missing, Rumpy exclaimed. Snow White smiled, so I wonder if I could make dinner for him here tomorrow night. And I want to give him a special gift, something he could add to his family shield. So she wants to make a family dinner for the prince for the anniversary. She wants to cook for a lovely princess. A lovely one. Uh, like a diamond? asked I. Don't you worry, Snow White. Oh, okay, take care of it myself. I mean, um, take care of it myself. Oh, thank you so much, she said. We'll meet there here tomorrow evening. After Snow White left, Grumpy turned to Doc and said, So, you don't think the rest of us can find a diamond good enough for Snow White? Well, well, we'll see about that. Grumpy stumped off all night. He planned which part, which part of the mine he would search, find a diamond, the perfect diamond. He planned for so long that the next morning he overslept. The others were gone when he woke up. He rushed out the door and ran right into the prince. Well, hello, Grumpy, the prince said, bowing. I'm glad to find you at home. I have a favor to ask you. So Grumpy wants to find a diamond for the princess, but he ran to the prince instead. Let's see what's, let's see what's gonna happen. The prince continued, Grumpy, I love Snow White so much that I want to give her the most precious gift I can to celebrate our anniversary. I am happy a crown made for her, and I would like to find the most beautiful, most perfect diamond to set in the center of it. Grumpy couldn't believe his ears. The prince was asking him to find a gift for Snow White. Why, if that didn't be the finding a gift for Snow White to give to the prince, he eat his... <laughs> his... Hat. Grumpy pulled up his chest proudly. I'll find the most beautiful, most sparkling, most dazzling diamond in the whole mine, he cried. They agreed to meet later that evening. So he's going to find a diamond for the prince. That way, he's making a crown for Snow White. That's so sweet. Meanwhile, deep in the mine, Dog found his perfect diamond. Even in the dim light of the mine, the diamond twinkled like a star. Dog hurried off to tell the other dwarves and to find a pickaxe to remove the gem. But Grumpy had also rushed deep into the mine. He turned a corner and stopped. There was the most beautiful, the most sparkly, the most dazzling diamond in the whole mine. It was the exact same diamond that Dog 
had found, but Grumpy didn't know that. He didn't want to smudge it, so he hurried off to find a sack for it. Ooh, they found the diamond for Snow White's crown. Let's see what's gonna happen next. Don't be whistled. A little tune to himself. He had been wandering through the mine alone, looking for the perfect diamond for Snow White. And there it was. And it was the very same diamond that Doc and Grumpy had chosen. Carefully, Don't be this large diamond with his pickaxe. Doc, Grumpy, and the other dwarves hurried back to the perfect diamond. Then they got there, they saw Dopey with his pickaxe and the diamond. Dopey! They shouted. Dopey looked up, his pickaxe slipped and hit the diamond. Faster than you could say, perfect and precious. The diamond had been broken into two pieces. Uh oh. It's been broken into two pieces, but let's see what happens next. No! Cried a dog and grumpy. They rushed over and each picked up a piece. I was going to give it to the prince for Snow White, said Grumpy. Well, I was going to give it to Snow White for the prince, said Doc. Far above them at the mines and trends, the end of the way whistle blew. It can't be that late already, cried Doc. What will we do? Snow White will be waiting for us when we get home. So will the prince and Grumpy. So the prince and Grumpy. Doc sighed. We'll just have to explain. Grumpy and Doc each put their half into a bag. On the way home, Dobby found some vines to the bag shot. So let's see what's gonna happen next. And there's Dobby. He's my favorite. At the Seven Dwarves Cottage, Snow White had just set the table for their anniversary dinner. The prince handed her a beautiful bouquet of flowers and kissed her on the cheek. Snow White wanted to tell him that this dinner was only part of her present, but she just smiled and waited for the dwarves to return. The prince ate his home-cooked meal slowly, enjoying every bite. Still, as he ate, the prince wondered what was keeping the seven dwarves from seven dwarves. Perhaps they didn't want to disturb Snow White's special dinner. The prince looked down the path and that led to the diamond mine one more time. He couldn't wait to give Snow White her diamond. Aww. She cooked dinner for him in front of the anniversary. That's so sweet of her. But they were waiting for the seven drawers to arrive with the same diamond. Snow White and the prince were just finishing their pie. When the dwarves returned, Snow White smiled at Doc. The prince smiled at Grumpy. Doc carefully set his bag in front of Snow White, while Grumpy gave his to the prince. Snow White and the prince looked at each other in surprise. This is the other part of my present. Sorry, this is the other part of my present, says Snow White. She touched the bag. The prince had in Snow White the other bag. We must think alike, he said. This is my present for you. It is for your crown. I hope you like it. Oh, <laughs> they're the same diamond. And look, they're having dinner together. That's so sweet. Snow White opened the bag. The prince's eyes widened when he saw the broken diamond. Grumpy crumbled his cap and frowned. 
Oh, darling, how unusual. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, darling, how unusual, says Snow White. As she held uh, the diamond half. Yes, said the prince, disappointed. Unusual. And I have something for you, Snow White beamed as she handed the prince her bag. The prince carefully let the diamond drop into his hand. Oh my, cried Snow White. She looked quickly at Doc, then down at her plate. The prince squeezed Snow White's hand. It is beautiful, my dear, because it is from you, he said. They got the same diamond. <laughs> well, the diamond is broken in half. Ay, ay, ay. Dark and grumpy. Always silly. But they're very good friends. Then Dobby began playing a sweet tune on his flute. He came over to the table and pointed to Snow White's diamond and the princess diamond. Yes, they are beautiful, Dobby, said Snow White. She patted his arm. Dobby shook his head and pointed to each of the pieces. Again, he looked at the prince. I'm sorry, said the prince. I don't understand. Dobby set down his flute. He reached for the princess diamond. Then he picked up Snow White's diamond, and as the prince and Snow White watched, he joined the two separate pieces into one perfect heart. Oh, no, look at the diamond, it's now a heart. He connected those two diamonds together. Very smart, Dopey. That's how, how Snow White and the prince feel about each other. True love. The next evening at the anniversary ball, Snow White did not wear her new crown. The prince did not display his family shield. Instead, they placed the two pieces of diamond side by side. Snow White and the prince danced the night away as the beautiful diamond sparkled and shone. And that is the end of the story. And look at that boys and girls, so beautiful the diamond, but so beautiful the true love between the prince and his princess, his wife, Snow White. And that's the end of the story. Oh, that was a very good story. They were, they were trying to surprise each other, but I guess so it turned out to be very surprising in a different way, but... Those two, they love each other. The prince loves Snow White, and Snow White loves her prince. And that's how true love between them two has grew very stronger, boys and girls. And true love always grows stronger every day for Snow White and her prince. And all thanks to the seven dwarves for helping them. Alright, I'll be right with my buddies, boys and girls.